Coming up next on Boston Rock Talk, we sit down with Dee Dee and Jules from the Dum Dum Girls. They talk about their latest album, Too True, and the long process taking it to fruition. Hello and welcome to Boston Rock Talk. It's a music and interview show that we have here uh, where we have artists that are playing the Boston area come by the studio to have a chat, do a bit of an interview, and they play some live music for us. My name is Jim Sullivan. I'm your host, and we are here today with the Dum Dum Girls. Welcome, girls. Hello. Jules, Dee Dee. Hi. Good to have you here in Norwell. Um, Dum Dum Girls, they're not all girls, right? Correct. Uh, as of this last record, Too True, we have a we have a boy. And you have had other boys throughout <laughs> the, the arc of the career, correct? We have, yeah. Um, it took a while to, to settle into the lineup that we've had for the last three or four years. Uh, so for a while, um, just various friends would help fill it out. Yeah, Jules and I have, I think, played almost all the shows together. I maybe played one without mm -hmm. her. Um, but yeah, we've played, we've probably had like 15 band members between the two of us that we've been shared the stage with. That's, well, you're obviously very comfortable with the setup and the way it works for you, where you do a lot of the recording, but there is the live band that uh, yeah, goes to. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, uh, there's, there's, you know, two sides of being a musician. There's the writing and recording process and the performance process, and, and I love them both, but one is more of a private, intimate thing mm -hmm. for me, and the other very much, you know, dependent on a group and, and having a sort of gang on stage. So. To people to be with and play off. And, yeah, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want so. to... Uh, you know, play by myself. I was going to say, have you ever capable of that? <laughs> have you ever done the solo guitar? I do. Yeah, guitar, I do I acoustic shows sometimes, right. but it's always terrifying. Yes, yeah. um, I'll ask you about the name itself because uh, "Dum Dum" comes from the uh, the song by the Vaselines and the Iggy Pop song, and I, I know there was some sort of conflation of the two in your your reasoning. Tell me a bit about that. Yeah. Um, so when I started again, it was it was uh, just me learning how to play guitar, learning how to write songs, how to demo, and the next logical step seemed to be to put it out into the world, which at the time was MySpace, dominated internet. Um, so the name, naming of the project came more out of a need for that than, you know, intentions of becoming a band and going on tour and, and all the stuff it ended up becoming. Um, so I was sitting in my living room, happened to look at a stack of records that was out and the Vaseline's record, Dum Dum, uh, was, was on top. And something about the way it looked, uh, the way it sounded, the fact that it's, you know, kind of a common backup vocal phrase. And mm -hmm. especially when I started and I was mining a lot more of the girl group territory, like that seemed like a spot on reference. Um, and then my husband, Brandon, reminded me that there was that Iggy Pop song off the Idiot called Dum Dum Boys. So it kind of just seemed like a like a perfect, you know, combo of, of references, especially because Vaseline's and uh, Stooges and Iggy Pop songs were, you know, sort of great models uh, to learn how to do effective, simple palms, uh, pop songwriting when yeah, I started. Yeah, I was, was going to say, the early Dum Dum Girls was more of a punky sound, I yeah. believe. And uh, uh, that, I know, has evolved. But tell me a bit about that evolution from... Uh, from yeah, I mean, it, it, it had uh, as much to do with, like, a stylistic intention as, as a limitation of, of what I was capable of playing. Um, when I started, you know, I three chords was sort of the green light. Like, okay, mm -hmm. you know... I, if I've learned this Ramon song or this Bob Dylan song and they're three chords, that means that I myself can now write a three chord song. One, four, five. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. that sort of thing. Sure. Um, but then as, as time has gone on and, you know, I, I look at songwriting like a craft that I have tried to develop and 
it's almost a, it's an inside joke with, with me and my engineer that with each release, I like introduce a new chord um, <laughs> that I've learned. You know? <laughs> and you're up to? <laughs> Uh, probably seven or eight at this point, yeah. But but again, another big thing was that when I stopped being the one that was recording myself, when I started uh, working with uh, one of my producers, Suna Rose Wagner from the Ravenettes, um, that kind of enabled me to have ideas that were, you know, beyond necessarily what I was capable of doing myself. Mm -hmm. um, but but with direction, could be like, okay, this is this is the basic song. And in these parts, I want this to happen. And although I'm not capable of doing it myself, it's, okay. you know, an easy exchange like that. So the studio was sort of your palette a in a bit, way. Yeah. And you can add colors, colors to it. Um, Jules, how do you feel about fitting into the project, the Dum Dum Girls project, as a member of the live band? Uh, obviously something you've been doing for some time and are comfortable with and enjoying. What, yeah. what do you bring to the package, do you think? Um, you know, a lot. Spirit, yeah. EMA. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I love touring. It, touring is kind of my favorite way to live. Mm -hmm. So yeah. She's like a great rock and roll muse. Not, I don't want to speak for her, but that's A great rock I, and roll muse? Yeah, yeah. In definitely. what way? She just really, she was born for this. Yeah, it's great. I mean, more so than anyone I've ever met. Yeah. Yeah, you see the world, new people. It's it's always interesting. Something new every day. It's like kind of uh, the way I like to live. So yeah. neither of you have reached the point in your rock career where getting in the van and going from city to city has become a drag. No. Yeah. Not, I mean, no. I no. I really love it too. Um, for whatever reason, I'm wired for it. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's Not cool. everyone is. For sure. um, I want to ask you about "Are You Okay," the song that you're going to start with here in a little bit. Uh, I was looking online the other day and, and uh, saw the 11 minute plus video that was directed by Brett Easton Ellis where your song is somewhere in the middle of it and there are things with you and another and an actress that happened in the beginning and the end so I highly recommend the viewers go to that not now but after this is over <laughs> but tell, tell me a bit about that where did that come from? Um, yeah that that was a pretty surreal uh, collaboration um, the producer of that video is a friend now uh, named Braxton Pope, and he did that Lindsay Lohan film with Brett Ellis called The Canyons, oh. and they used a Dum Dum Girl song in the film, and so that kind of just created a, a conversation. Um, and as a Brett Easton Ellis fan, I, you know, of course, put it out if you, you know, would ever like to use my music for anything, mm -hmm. like I'd be flattered, and I'm a big fan, and. It, Sort of just a just a seed was planted that maybe we would do something at some point, um, and it really took almost a year to make something happen. I mean, the the record Too True took a long time from from start to finish, just because there was like a I don't know six to nine month period in there where I had to recuperate my voice that I had blown and. Um, so there was a lot of time for little ideas to, to grow into something bigger. And um, I think initially when I met him, I was a blonde. And uh, <laughs> something about our conversation, you know, I, I, I made him think of the Brian De Palma film, Dress to Kill. Uh -huh. and so that was uh -huh. sort of the initial reference. Mm -hmm. was like maybe we were going to do some sort of spin on a modern version of that. Um, and then over the course of the year that the project you know, was an in incubation. We brought on uh, this directing team, Brewer. They're two young brothers in LA, um, and they collaborated with Brett and kind of wrote a, a more original uh, version of of sort of like a psychological sexual thriller or something. Um, yeah, and then then we went to Joshua Tree in LA and filmed it, and it was really very very much an interesting experience because as you say like the song is uh you know almost the smallest part of the mm -hmm. whole thing um but in terms of a you know a collaboration it was it was really interesting for me to be a part of something on the film side to me the song has something to do with regret i think about being up all night and then the next day kind of having pain for it perhaps and is that well, that's every song. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think, I think uh, the way that I tend to write songs is I get stuck on like a, a chorus phrase. And so 
for whatever reason, I became obsessed with the idea of, you know, oh, I don't, I don't think I've ever heard a song where that, that simple question is asked. And I know that in my personal life, I probably say it, you know, 20 times a day, and <laughs> there's all this subtext, and, you know, uh, so yeah, that, I just kind of ran with that idea, and um, I actually didn't think it was going to be a Dumb Dumb Girl song. I kind of casually wrote it uh, with the idea of, of pitching it to Ronnie Spector, because that's kind of a hmm. something that hmm. I've toyed with uh, doing for a few years after having met her and talked about music and stuff. Um, but my producer was like, "No way, you're this not is a giving good this one. one away." Yeah, so. you should do it. Yeah. Um, so there, there was kind of a. It was a little bit different. I think it was maybe somehow less guarded because I didn't anticipate having to to sing it myself, mm -hmm. um, which maybe was was why people, you know, responded to it, Good. which I should remember. Good point. Well, why don't you uh, start the music segment? You're going to be playing that, and uh, Andrew will be joining you, the, uh, the off-camera dum-dum girl, and uh, kick it out. <laughs> 